Hello everyone, welcome you all. Today I am going to start a series of Java interview questions for uh, automation testers. So I will be covering both entry level automation questions and uh, also the experience guy questions in terms of Java programming and Java interview questions. So let's get started. In case if you are new to my channel, do subscribe. Let's begin. So our first question is what is string in Java and uh, is string is a data type. So this is a little tricky and uh, most confusing question so most of we think that string is a uh, data type but string is a class in java and defined in the java.lang.package and it's not a primitive data type and the string class represents the character strings and the string is used in almost in all java applications and string is immutable and final in java means it is not changed and we cannot change that and uh, it uses the string pool to store all the string objects so string pool is a place where all the strings are stored so let's move on to the next question so what is the different ways to create a string object so this is a continuation question of the first question and uh, here we have a two different approaches that we can create an object for string one is like a string and with the new keyword we are again creating a string and passing an argument which is a string again so by this it will be creating an object for the string and where that object will be stored in the heap memory and the second one is a string str string is equal to abc so this will be stored in the direct string pool where the both are in different places so these are the two ways that we can create an object for the string so let's move to the next question write a method to check uh, if the input string is palindrome or not so all in all interview questions we will see this kind of question for sure so palindrome question is referring to whether we have any string or when we have any string of array objects so we wanted to make them as a palindrome means on reversing that the same meaning will be represented we can use the two different approaches one is using the inbuilt method one is a reverse method so you can see on the left side so this is the program that we can directly call using the reverse method using a string builder in case uh, in some interview questions you may see they will be asking that without using any inbuilt method how can you do a palindrome of a string so in that cases you can see on the right side so by taking consideration of uh, for loop so we need to take the length of the string and we can uh, do an iteration or we can decrease the iteration by using the length by two for entry level you will face this uh, reverse method only they will be asking for experience like more than five years or ten years they will be asking uh, using the for loop so you are iterating the entire length by using the string dot length so they wanted to cut down the length and they want to don't want to do the iterations if it is length is 10 of length then you wanted to reiterate only five times and you, then you need to confirm the palindrome is or not so that for that you can use this kind of approach like using this length by two method and using the string at character at i or character at this particular location and we can match it just let's move on to the next question how to compare two strings in a java program so we have uh, two different approaches which is in a compare to method which will be provided by the two methods implementation which is a comparable interface and using that we have compare to under compare to we can provide the string of another uh, string value in that compare to by, and also we can use the equals method as well where equals is uh, testing the accurate results and where compare to equal ignore case where uppercase and lowercase is also ignored and we will be checking both the strings and equal ignore case is one more approach let's move on to the next question how to convert string to character and vice versa so this is a uh, one more question for uh, entry level and two place years guy you can face this kind of question in the automation area so using that uh, two character array so using the two character array if any string is given so we can convert that using the two character array and we can store that in the value of characters so here you can see the program for it so using this two character array so it will be storing all the string values in the form of array and later we can take the characters length available in the characters array and we can get the exact position of each and every character using the character it so here the index is passed so that that value will be picked up so let's move on to the next question so how to convert a string to the byte array and vice versa so this is a question for almost like a two to five years or plus five years guy can expect this kind of question how to convert the string and string to the byte array so we have an uh, option available in the strings it will like uh, using the bytes we can get bytes for entire string 
now in the left side you can see so this is a string that we wanted to convert to an byte string so once we convert to the byte and using the arrays dot to string so it is converted into arrays i mean it is converted to bytes and you wanted to print in the console to print in the console you need to require arrays dot to byte right so we need to provide the bytes here in the to string area and you can see the output that how it look like so each and every character here are storing one bytes so this s character has this many bytes and u has this many bytes similarly all the bytes and reversely if you wanted to make bytes to the string then you can use this uh, approach here in the right side you can see so first we need to declare the bytes array and in the array we need to pass all the characters and uh, in i mean any integer values that we are passing and using the string object so we need to create a string object for it on the bytes and we can directly call the strings here so by using that you will get all the strings from the bytes so let's move to the next question so can we use a string in the switch cases so this is also a little tricky and confusing question because most of we know that we can use the strings in the switch cases but if you are aware of java 6 or java 7 earlier versions there is no way to we can use this switch cases from java 7 we can extend the capability of switch cases and we can use the strings also but earlier versions are not supported and let's move to the next question so difference between string string builder and string buffer so this is also one of the interesting question which will be asked for all categories of experience so string is an immutable type and final right so it will be not changed and final once we declare that will be final and we wanted to make some dynamically changing or dynamically accepting values then we can go for string builder and string buffer so however we do have a string manipulations but uh, creating a string i mean create it creates an, a new string and where new strings also manipulation resources are consuming so the java provides a two virility classes which is a java string manipulation using a string buffer and string builder and string buffer string builder, string builder are immutable so you need to you need to i mean understand string is an immutable string buffer and string builder is an immutable and string buffer operates are operations are thread safe and synchronized whereas string builder operations are not thread safety and where it's multi-threaded environment and in terms of performance if you see in terms of performance a string builder performance is high when compared to the string buffer because there is a no overhead of synchronization and this is also one more interview question like which is a faster between which is a faster in both string buffer and string builder we can say string builder is an uh, performance high than compared to the string buffer let's move to the next question and does string is a thread safety in java so as you know string is an immutable so we can't change it once it values in uh, assign in a program hence it is a thread safe right so let's move to the next question how many string objects got created in the below code snippet so if you see here there is an two object creations happen for uh, only one similar string which is a test string so in the line one the object is in string pool and the same line one you can see the new string value test is in a heap memory also i mean the test is also there in the heap memory and pool also and in the line two you can see again we are creating the same reference i mean we are creating again object for the same test and it is in the heap memory hence the test which we are uh, trying to create second time right because it's already available so we can reuse that so it means that it will be creating only one object so next object will be reused let's move to the next question what does string intern method do so in strings we have one option like intern so if you see the line uh, one in the string s1 equal to abc and string s2 equal to new abc both the reference are different because first one is there in the string pool and second string is there in the heap memory and the references are different and if you see sysout that we are comparing s1 to s2 where s1 s2 we are having different reference so it will be giving them a false value and here s2 is an intern you are using the intern so once we are using that intern method where we know that intern method will be returning the string object reference from the string pool and until unless you assign this s2 value to i mean s2 dot intern value to s2 again then it will be not giving you true once you make the s2 equal to s2 dot intern then it will be comparing true then you can see the true value output
right you got this point right so the different object reference are different so we are making both in place of one area so that's the reason we are using intern method let's move to the next question what will be an output of below code snippet so if you see we are having two different uh, object creations and we have uh, uh, making the s1 s2 making equal though we have same string used here but heap memory locations are different so it will be a false okay you got the question right okay let's move on to the next question which class is the super class of all the classes so this is the very common question asked for every person right, irrespective of their experience so java lang object is an root class for all the java classes and uh, we don't need to extend it further you got the question right let's move on to the next question what is the importance of main method in the java so every time we write any program java jvm looks for main method only so main method is an entry point for any standalone java application the syntax will be public static void main string array arguments and whereas in the method you can see public static so public static so that java runtime can access it without initializing the class and the input arguments or input parameters are in the array of string through which we can pass the runtime arguments in the java program let's move on to the next question can we overload the main method yes we can do that and we can have multiple methods with the name of name of main but however even though we have many main methods jvm looks for the syntax of public static void main and from there program will be executed okay so we can have multiple main methods but it will look for only public static void main let's move on to the next question so what is a final keyword so this is also as for almost all experienced guy people like uh, three place five place ten place so final keyword is used with the class to make sure that no other classes are extending it and for example if string class is a final we cannot extend it and we can use the final keyword with the method to make the make sure that shared classes cannot be overrided so we are making it to be ensure that it is we cannot change it once we declare it in a final and java final keyword can be used with an variables to make sure that it it can be assigned to only once i mean only once we can assign it however the state of variable can be changed but we can change the state of variable but for method and class we cannot do it only for variable we have this option and we can assign final variable to an object only once but object variables can be changed later on right and uh, java interface variables are by default final static okay let's move to the next question and what is the static keyword so this is also one of the most asked interview question the static keyword can be used within class level variables to make it globally and so that we don't need to create any object creation for it so once we declare any static static uh, method or static class we cannot uh, we don't need to initiate again it we can directly use it and static keyword can be used for used with a method and also a static method can access only static variables of that class and invoke invoke only the static methods of that class right you got the point right like we can do for method level we can do it for variable levels let's move on to the next question how does java archive the platform independence so we need to know why java is a platform independent so it's an entry level question for uh, i mean uh, for entry level automation question so why it makes the sense of why it is a java is a platform independent because of its byte code nature so every time we compile the program it will convert that into byte code where byte code will be executed in any platform using the jvm right this is a platform independency because of this byte code let's move on to the next question what is the final ion finalize in a java finally is used for used with respect to the try catch block where irrespective of any exception got finally will be executed so most of the i mean most of the time we can use this finally for any code that we wanted to run it every time even though we get any exception and whereas finalize is an uh, used for garbage collector so it is an specific method in the object class where it it is responsible for terminating or deleting any unused 
memory location in the heap memory so using the system.gc we can use this finalize methods so it will be uh, deleting all the unused uh, references let's move to the next question what are the wrapper classes so this is also most common question asked for uh, most of the automation guys so wrapper classes are object representation of the primitive data types if you wanted to declare any data type as their object reference like for int integer for char character so like we can use it for their object represent representation so we can use this wrapper classes and all the wrapper classes in java are immutable and final right once we declare we cannot change it so this is used whenever we wanted to take the conversion between the both like integer to character character to integer or string so we can use this wrapper classes in place i hope this session is useful for you in case if you are new to my channel do subscribe we'll bring more questions in future thank you for watching